Hi everybody, my name's Phyllis Moore and you have happened upon or purposely, hopefully, gotten um, onto my YouTube channel, Philosophically Speaking. I invite you to click like, share, and subscribe. And actually, my subhead could be clueless, looking for answers on any given day. I am an expert at nothing. I know a little about a lot of things and I can't even say that that's correct. But, you know, there are, are things that I think I know. Always very, very shy growing up to the point that because my dad was military and I was always moving to new places and, and got to be the new kid, I remember vividly, probably 10 or 12 years old, I was at a school and starting out and somebody there, I don't know if they were tasked with introducing me around by one of the teachers or they took it upon themselves, but I'll never forget her, I think we were going into the cafeteria or, you know, some common area. And she said, this is, this is Phyllis, she's brand new. And I, I remember even at that young age, my first thought was, well, I'm not brand new. I've been around for like 10 years. Yeah, I'm just brand new to you, <laughs> you know, whatever. But I always had that kind of literal translation in my head. But because I was so shy, I did not even like to answer roll call. I would clear my throat and I would be like, because <clears throat> I didn't want to sound scratchy and awful and draw any undue attention to myself. That, that just was, you know, not something, you know, I don't want everybody turning around looking and going, oh, what is with her voice? But I also would not raise my hand in class. I was never confident enough that I knew the answer. Even if I thought I did, even if I was pretty sure, not gonna go there. And the shyness spilled over. If, if a teacher from elementary on up to college would ever say, Participation will be 50% of your grade. I went, great. Most, most I can get from this class is 50% because it was not happening. And even to the point that followed me right on up until I was an adult and might be in a staff meeting and hated, I just, I've always hated that kind of thing because if you want to give me information, I'll take it. But if I have to participate, <laughs> um, it's one thing to lead you know, a group, because then you have the, the information and you're supposed to be more prepared than they are. But do not put me on the spot. Do not ask me to raise my hand. Do not ask me to give you any information that I have not had ample time in advance to prepare and give, give to you. I just, some of that's shyness. Some of it is I've just always felt like I don't have anything to contribute. So in this pandemic that we find ourselves in, the other side of that coin is that I'm enjoying the thought process, the, the chance to just relax and kind of get clear about things that I think and I feel and I believe. And the faith component has really been a nice, wonderful, silver lining byproduct that I have wanted and needed because sometimes we get so, so busy. We have to be here, we have to be there, we have to do this, we have to do that. We have all these to-do lists and appointments and people to call and places to go and people to see and things to do and, and all of that. And one of the things that I know I have been able to carve out during vacation times when I've had those, those opportunities when I'm not working and I'm staying at home, I'm local, my husband's still working and he's out, you know, doing that and we have not opted to go away because he's not off and, and it's my vacation time. I have used that opportunity to go and sit on my back porch like I'm doing now and sometimes just sit. You know, you think, oh, I need to be reading a book or I need to have a devotional and or I need to read the Bible. All worthy goals. But sometimes... It is important to just sit and take it in. Just listen. You know, whether it's the birds singing outside or the stillness. And I know that lately, you know, that's what I've decided is missing. 
because we can go, 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 go. We're a human going, a human doing instead of a human being. And so I heard a speaker one day on my walk and the, the message was about prayer and how when we pray, which is essentially meditating and talking to God, sometimes we just rattle off, whether it's a list of things we're thankful for, gratitude, which is fab, or I need, I need, I need, please, 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 you know, and, and in this day and age, um, someone who is not me, <laughs> someone that, you know, she and I were emailing back and forth and she wrote and said, I'm just praying for the world. And I thought, yeah, that says it. And we may not have the eloquent words or thoughts or what do we need to say and, and how do we pray or sometimes, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. I can feel like Job. If you're familiar with Job in the Bible, it's J-O-B, so it looks like Job. But Job went through a ton of stuff. And I can do that as well. And I'm not going to go on and on about my personal list. We all have one. But this time has been very difficult. My parents are older. They're 88 and 89 years old. Can't go visit them. Not supposed to take any chances. They've got underlying health concerns and they're not venturing out because my dad is bedridden and, and you know, I mean, I'll, I'll unpack that another day, but they have a maid that lives there, a maid. Why did I say maid? I'm sorry, a live-in nurse and she has other patients. So I could dwell on that every day. I could dwell on that and worry and fret but I just have to trust God because this is bigger than me. We have prodigal children, if you will, who, you know, have, have kind of kind of cut us out of the <laughs> out of their lives, family members that, you know, whatever, you know, the people that are supposed to be the closest to you sometimes can be challenging because they, you know, don't want to have a relationship or the relationship is fragmented or whatever. I could go on and on and on about all kinds of things. I, you know, retired from one job and then was working with them again free freelance and then got, I guess, furloughed or they were not able to continue doing the freelance role because everything has been just shutting down. So that source of income kind of gone. I have another another job, another role, and they've kind of clamped down on the hours and the time. So the rug's been pulled out from, from under me just like so many others. And it's not the worst thing. I am thankful for money in the bank and some savings and my husband works and, you know, various things. My health is, is I think, good. I think I'm feeling good. Who knows? Who knows? But on any given day, my emotions can go up, down, all around because someone can say something or do something or just being affected by things that we hear and see and read and all this other. I say that to lead into the other part, which is I'm trying to have faith and realize, and this is an extrapolation of things that I've heard, so it's not like, oh my gosh, I'm just insightful. I'm not, but I recognize good ideas and good thoughts when I hear them. And instead of rattling off my list of prayers, I'm trying to step back and say, you know what? I need to do more than just have a one-sided conversation with God. I need to have a listening component. So whether it's on my walk or when I'm on my porch or just different things, I try to just sometimes sit and be in silence and say, okay, God, what do you want me to learn? What do you want me to do? Who do you want me to be? And it's not me giving him my wish list or my you know, heart's desire, I guess. It's, it's like, okay, what am I supposed to learn in this time? And what I have discovered is whether it's your child, your in-laws, your neighbors, your coworkers, anybody that you, you know or have known sometimes can hurt us or disappoint us or, you know, they just, they, they don't want to, um, forgive or have a relationship or whatever, whatever the scenario is, we all probably have some variations of that theme. Forgiveness you know, if we, if we have done something wrong and we want to be forgiven, you know, certainly it's wonderful to be remorseful and repentant, which just means you don't go, sorry, keep doing it. 
you turn and go in another direction and say, you know, I'm going to behave differently. And for those who might have wronged us, it's not about they need to apologize, they need to come to... You know, sometimes we just need to let go of that and say, you know, forgiveness is really not about letting the other person off the hook, letting them get away with it. It's really about saying, you know what, letting go and just saying, you know what, I don't need to let that have any power over me. I don't need to or want to or choose to be angry or resentful or holding on to it. And that's what I've been doing lately is trying. Uh, it's an experiment to see what happens if I pray for all these people, not on an ongoing basis, but occasionally, and just say, Lord, help me to forgive. My ultimate goal and desire is that if any or all of the people that, you know, might be on that list were to come to me today and say, oh, can you forgive me? That I would be able to say, already have. And in order to do that, whether or not that's how it's not conditional, whether or not that ever comes about is for me to just live at peace. My husband says to me all the time, keep your spirit sweet. And I have found myself shifting of late because I've had the time to slow down, to calm down, to rest, to try to just, you know, be open to what God is going to teach me. Is it an audible voice? No. But sometimes it's just about realignment and saying, you know what, this is who God made me to be. And I'm comfortable in my own skin because I'm not supposed to be anybody else. That's not my job. My job is to be me, just like your job is to be you. And in order to get to that point of just, you know, I don't have any magic cures, magic answers. I don't. But I know for me, I am trying to and choosing to let God be God. God is capable of all of these things. Whatever we would pray about, whatever we would ask him, he is probably on the case. He created the world, so he knows the needs. He knows what my parents need. He knows what my children need. He knows what, you know, business and corporations and leaders you know, I'm going to let all of that unfold. Huge, huge growth for me because it's very hard to let life unfold on its own. We, you know, we feel like we must control it or we must pull, take away the, the steering wheel or, you know, or, or take the, take the wheel or take the leap. We don't have to do that. Let God be God. He is good at that. Uh, I am a work in progress. Like I said, don't have all the answers. I have probably more questions than answers, and some of them probably will not be answered while I live on this earth. But for today, and for tomorrow, and for every day that I get to inhabit my skin and stay on this planet and walk and blink and breathe and all of those things, um, I'm gonna choose to sit back and try to listen, not being lazy, but I encourage you as well to find whatever that is that's going to help center you. And don't be in such a hurry. Sometimes we, we are given lessons, gifts, silver linings that we don't realize until later. So I'm hoping that you, as I am working on, will recognize some of those gifts that are right in your midst in this time that you have been given. I, I do hope that you are well and safe and that you can find your blessings exceed all of the other challenges. Don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe. Thanks again for tuning in. Talk to you later.